Lockbit is back, the White House is worried, and Apple is going post-quantum. I'm Allie Diamond, and let's dive into this week's ThreatWire. Lockbit is back online after an international operation to take down the group, as we reported last week. They moved to a new Onion address and have already published five new victims on their website. They were only out of operation for about a week. Operation Kronos was a coordinated effort between 10 countries. Reports explained that they took possession of over 1,000 decryption keys, crypto addresses, stolen data, and more. In tandem, the U.S. charged two Russian nationals, while police in Poland and the Ukraine made two arrests for their involvement with Lockbit. How did this happen? I wish I was joking, but the Lockbit servers were infiltrated due to using an older version of PHP. Yeah. Um, Lockbit Sup, who is the front speaker for the group, shared in a write-up. Due to my personal negligence and irresponsibility, I relaxed and did not update PHP in time as a result of which access was gained to the two main servers where this version of PHP was installed. As an aside, I noticed a lot of reporters talking about VX Underground as if it was one person. Just as a heads up, VX Underground is a collective that specializes in malware collection. On February 26th, the Office of the National Cyber Director released a statement encouraging more companies to move to memory-safe programming languages. The press release, named The Future of Software Should Be Memory Safe, is paired with a full report outlining the White House's logic and study for the encouraging of memory-safe language use. For new products, choosing to build in a memory-safe programming language is an early architecture decision that can deliver significant security benefits. Even for existing code bases, where a complete rewrite of code is more challenging, there are still paths towards adopting memory-safe programming languages by taking a hybrid approach. For example, software developers can identify the critical functions or libraries based on risk criteria and prioritize efforts to rewrite those first. The report specifically calls out C and C++ as languages with high popularity but lack memory safety. And in the programming community, it is widely accepted that Rust is a valid alternative to C++. So basically, the White House did say to use Rust. To me, this is such an interesting press release to publish. Maybe it's due to my sphere of information gathering, but I have a feeling that this recommendation may not make it into the hands of the average software engineer. I'm curious to hear from you. Is this the first time you're hearing of this recommendation from the White House? What do you think? Are you building a company and did you hear of this recommendation? Do you think that this press release or a press release in general is the most effective way to get the information into the hands of decision makers and founders who are building the future of software? In the great computing race, we are rapidly approaching quantum computing being accessible to all. On February 21st, Apple's security research team published a new blog post announcing their protocol named PQ3. PQ3 is described as a groundbreaking post-quantum cryptographic protocol that advances the state-of-the-art of end-to-end -end secure messaging. Apple will use this to achieve level three security using post-quantum computing cryptography for securing initial key establishment and ongoing message exchange. iMessage now meets this goal with a new cryptographic protocol that we call PQ3, offering the strongest protection against quantum attacks and becoming the only widely available messaging service to reach level three security. iMessage's PQ3 security properties were mathematically proven, known as formal verification by experts in the cryptography space across the world, and third-party consultants found no security issues in the PQ3 source code. PQ3 encryption is rolling out soon to all Apple products and is actually already in the developer previews of certain versions of the Apple operating systems. Thank you so much for tuning in to ThreatWire for the week of February 26th, 2024. If you're enjoying this reporting and want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Thank you so much, and we literally couldn't do this without you. Sorry for the episode being a little short this week. I've been prepping for an event that I'm hosting and planning called the Net Gala, which is a one-night extravaganza dedicated to the intersection of art, technology, and hacking. It's this weekend, so a lot of my free time has been going to that. Um, if you want to check it out, we have a website called thenetgala.com, so go head over there. Um, but anyways, I'm Allie Diamond. I'm at Ending with Allie on everywhere, including Minecraft. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.